So in this video, we will be discussing local and global communication in multicultural settings. We are going to discuss using culturally appropriate terms, expressions, and images. And I hope that after this lecture video, you'll be able to adopt cultural and intercultural awareness and sensitivity to have an effective communication in a culturally, culturally diverse setting. To start with the topic, local and global communication in multicultural settings, let us define the following terms. What is local communication? When we say local communication, is being able to communicate with the members of our local area. It can either be in your local language or mother tongue, or a common language that you speak within your town. Example, um, local area can be in Negros and our local language is Bisaya. Or the local area can be the Philippines, the country, the Philippines. And our common language is Tagalog or Filipino. Global communication, on the other hand, is global community refers to the people or nations of the world connected by modern telecommunications and as being economically socially and politically interdependent so being able to communicate with all the nations around the world with the help of modern telecommunications so you have your cell phone the internet the telephones video calls and that so global communication is the term term used to describe ways to connect, share, relate, and mobilize across geographic, political, economic, social, and cultural divides. Before we talk about how to communicate through cultures, we must first consider what culture means to us, right? What do we mean by culture? Often, culture is, term, is a term used to encompass a group of people who share common characteristics like language or social practices so it's our way of life being aware of your own culture is a big part of understanding someone's someone else that is cultural awareness cultural awareness is knowing that there are multiple different cultures it's not just the culture that you have culture based Culture is based on religion, ethnicity, nationality, and other factors that have different attitudes and outlooks. An example is this picture, Catholics. So this is a picture of Chinese Catholics who have their own specific culture that is different from the Muslims. So even if we are living in the same country, the Philippines, we share the same culture as Filipinos. However, we also differ in culture in terms of religion and or ethnicity. We have different ethnic background and many others. There are many cultures and sub subcultures within our country. So that is what we call cultural diversity, the existence of a variety of cultural or ethnic groups within a society. And so because we are aware that there are different cultures and we differ in our cultures or in our way of life or our beliefs and social practices this culture we need to have cultural sensitivity cultural sensitivity is and it involves accepting those differences without insisting your own culture is better or that everyone should do it your way so being culturally cultural culturally sensitive is having respect to all the different cultures you can never go wrong with respect wherever you go carry with you your that attitude of respect and not be arrogant because wherever you go there will be a lot of different cultures different perspectives in life so ha carry with you bring with you apart from your cell phone is respect Sometimes people tend to be dominant, thinking that they are better because they came from, say, Manila or from other countries. Remember that we are all human beings and no one is above us. We all share the same rights and privileges. So, again, respect comes in handy. Okay, communication in multicultural setting is a process of communication by people coming from different culture 
with different sets of beliefs and practices. So <clears throat> communicating with your audience that have different cultures, so meaning different beliefs and practices. For example, imagine even in, um, in your uh, classroom before, you have your classmates from different areas in Negros or in the Philippines, some in Manila or Luzon, some in Mindanao, some in Visayas, and of different religions. So different stu students have different beliefs and way of life. So that is a multicultural setting. Another example when, is when you will be working in the future. So you will encounter colleagues or workmates from different countries who speak different languages as well as practice different beliefs. So that is, again, an example of multicultural setting. In this picture, this is a multicultural setting. We have Filipinos, we have American, we have Australian in this picture. So that is, those, these people have different cultures, different languages, and different ways of life. But how are we going to be an effective communicator in a, communi in a, in a multicultural setting? First is we need to have global awareness. So global awareness is a skill which is an individual, you or we, must possess, especially in communicating in multicultural setting. This lecture will teach you to have a global awareness so you'll be able to communicate effectively to different audiences. <coughs> Examples, people from different culture that is opposite from yours. Another term that we need to know is ethnocentrism. It is a belief that one culture is better or superior than any other culture. I will be further discussing this in the later slides. Cultural relativism is a belief that all culture is equal, is of equal value, and should be treated with respect and fairness rather than being treated with criticism and negative judgment. Cultural appreciation is the manner of giving honor and respect of one's culture from the word appreciation. You appreciate, you give honor. Cultural appropriation, so that is the opposite of appreciation. Appropriation, cultural appropriation, is the inappropriate adoption and the lack of acknowledgement of one's culture for the sake of one's personal interests. So these um, terms will be fully discussed in the further slides. So please get to know these terms because these are important in communicating in a multicultural setting. Communication in multi multicultural setting. We must know that communication is culture-bound. Communication is a reflection of the culture of a society or communication. So it is safe to say that communication is developed because of culture. Hence, communication and culture are two interdependent concepts. So this, is a theor this theory is validated by Edward Hall when he observed that communication is culture and culture is communication. We, might, we may say that Bisaya have the same culture. Bisaya have their own culture. Tagalog have their own culture. Um, Ilongo have their own culture that is different from Bisaya and Tagalog. So communication and culture or language and culture is interdependent. In fact, our verbal and non-verbal communications reflect our culture and vice versa. Example, when you do this, psst. If you do this outside the country, only the Filipinos will look back because they would know that someone's, um, someone's calling them by that, but by that sign. No, but if you do that to Americans or Europeans, it's probably improper or disrespectful for them. So in our manner of dressing as well as our lifestyle with forms is okay. Our dressing, our the way we dress and our lifestyle forms part of our communication systems and it reveals so much about our culture. So intercultural communication is interaction and communication among persons and communities with varied cultural backgrounds. So there is complexity in intercultural communication because 
we have different perspectives, different point of views in life. As a result, miscommunications and problems may arise. We even have miscommunication even if we speak the same language. Magbinisaya pa ta, dili pagyapon ta masabdan. How much more if there is intercultural communication, different languages, different beliefs, different practices, different perspectives, or different po- the point of views in life. So if there that which we call intercultural communication, if that happens, uh, one thing that is there is high possibility of miscommunications and problems. So to solve this, understanding and acceptance of cultures should be involved in the communication process. Just as in just as in any relationship, understanding and acceptance is very necessary to avoid problems. Do you agree? Successful communication in an international and intercultural setting. We said in the previous slide that in, in an international and intercultural setting, there is a high increase or high possibilities that there's miscommunication or problems. So how to be successful in communicating with international and intercultural audience? So the advent of information and communication technology has made the globe smaller where it has become as easy as a flick of a finger to communicate and interact with people around the world. Thus, political, social, and economic interactions among countries and people have been facilitated, now called globalization, right? We know what globalization is. The effect of globalization is internationalization and interculturalization. So the question is, how could one be an effective communicator in an international and intercultural setting? So the following are the tips that may be worth considering. So that, and put this in your pocket, especially when you are communicating with foreigners or people that is different from your culture. Especially when you work, when you work abroad. Okay, the first one is global awareness. So what is global awareness? One should be knowledgeable of developments and issues obtaining in countries around the world. So you should be aware of the global issues. You, have, you should have knowledge of the global developments and issues. So thanks to the internet, right? A type, of, a type of a question or topic we want to study can be searched in just one click. We should use the technology for that purpose. Again, to learn and be globally aware. Also, Netflix or television shows provide knowledge of different existing cultures around the world. We have the American, mostly American. We have Asian, Japanese, manga, um, Chinese, uh, Koreans. We have, we have the Korean telenovelas and all that. And because of that, we are aware of the different cultures around the world. Thus, we are not ignorant of other people's culture. However, we may not know everything about their culture, right? There are many cultures all over the world. So again, respect. Respect comes in handy. Okay, next is cultural sensitivity. To be an effective communicator, we have to know, we have to accept, and we have to respect the culture of our audience and readers. Know that we are all equal and should not, and should not make fun of other cultures. Again, respect. Third, cultural intelligence or CQ and competence. So this quality related to the capacity of a person to adjust to, and to cope with situations in which differences in cultures and belief had been observed. So you'll have cultural intelligence if you are aware of, you're, you're able to adjust and cope with the situations with differences of cultures and belief, you know? A meaning, if you're able to adjust or cope, you are not offending anyone and you have effective communication despite the differences of culture. So that is cultural intelligence. Respect for the cultures and beliefs of others. Our success in our relationship with others depends on our respect for their cultures and beliefs. In other words, respect begets respect. People will respect you if they sense that you also respect them. Again, respect. Okay, number five, 
openness and positive attitude towards other others you need to have an open and positive attitude towards other others the key to a successful relationship is an open and positive attitude toward others openness means you are not closed minded you are open to receive whatever message from the sender without bias without prejudice positive attitude shows you shows you are eager to communicate you're looking forward to receiving any knowledge and ideas from the sender so your openness and positive attitude can be seen in your words tones and body language when you are communicating so be aware of how you communicate and then also smile instead of frowning so that would show that you're open and you have positive attitudes towards others so to summarize for for you to easily remember how to have a successful communication in an international and intercultural setting first is respect and communicate without bias without prejudice and then smile so those these are the things that you have to remember to have a successful communication or effective communication in international and intercultural setting Ethnocentrism. So let's discuss about ethnocentrism. So the Webster Third Dictionary defines ethnocentrism as a habitual disposition to judge foreign peoples or groups by the standards and practices of one's own culture or ethnic group. So it is a belief that one's own practice is the proper way of life. So it sounds like egocentric. So it's like ethno so it's also ethnocentric your own ethnicity is the best that is ethnocentrism example the westerns may look down to asians because they may think that their standards of way of life is better than asians sometimes what is hurtful is that our own kababayans are the ones who degrade the filipino cultures a common phrase we hear is ganyan talaga ang mga tao sa pilipinas kaya walang asenso is that familiar to you? Sometimes we also make fun of the Chinese or the Indians because we think that Filipinos are better than them. So that is ethnocentrism. People from another country tend to judge those coming from other countries based on their standards, cultural practices, values, and beliefs. Thus, the tendency to look down upon the culture of other peoples, resulting in inaccurate assumptions. Thus, those who have not been exposed to other cultures may have the tendency to impose his or her own belief, find it challenging to relate with other people belonging to another culture, and a result in a gap in relationship. Because they don't understand. They don't understand the culture of another person that's why they judge the tendency they look down and challenge their belief it's a negative prejudgment and dislike of food from other countries so again uh, a negative prejudgment and dislike of food from other countries is an example of ethnocentrism like some some foreigners would do not want to eat balot and would say a lot of things about it and all that so that's a that's an ethnocentrism Okay, what are the possible effects of ethnocentrism to intercultural and global communication? First, bias. Bias connotes a favorable impression towards a culture or belief. So you prefer one culture to another. Another is prejudice. It's the opposite of bias. Prejudice is a preconceived notion. So you have judgment even without knowledge of the facts. Another is discrimination. It is an unfair treatment of a person or group as a consequence of an adverse judgment or opinion of a culture. Like for example, Bajau. No? You discriminate them because you think that the, your standards are way better than them. So that's discrimination. Loyalty. Ethnocentrism can cement loyalty within the same social grouping or people belonging to the same society. So an example would be boxing. Tendency, we support the team coming from our own country and make judgments and say negative things about the other country. Another, miscommunication. 
with bias or prejudice, there will always be miscommunication. So, in ethnocentrism, there's bias, there's prejudice, there's discrimination, there's loyalty. The loyalty can is part of ethnocentrism because we need to view cultures equally. No, well, I, nothing is above any culture. No culture is above any culture. And lastly, division. So when there's miscommunication, there's no unity. So people tend to be divided. So that is what happens. That is the, the possible effects if there's ethnocentrism in intercultural and global communication. So ethnocentrism should not be, it's a bad habit to have. Okay, and be aware of that. Okay, another term that we need to know is cultural relativism. Cultural relativism, as I've explained, as I, we've, we've defined it earlier, is a belief that all culture is of equal value and should be treated with respect and fairness rather than being treated with criticism and negative judgment. So this is the opposite of, cult of ethnocentrism. So ethnocentrism should be avoided and cultural relativism should be uh, practice. So the concept of cultural relativism implies that a person's beliefs and practices should be perceived by others in the context of his culture. This also means not judging the culture of other people that are not the same as yours. Example, some women swim in the beach with their swimwear or two-piece because they want that. It, it, if, if not, because they want that, if not all, most of their skin is exposed to the sun as they see the benefits of the sun exposure and they want to be brown as they can get or more melanin to the skin. So there are a lot of foreign, even Filipinos, that wear this in the beach because they don't perceive it as a sexual gesture. But some culture or some people without knowledge without the knowledge of cultural relativism, would see it negatively and judge them. Okay, so please be aware of cultural relativism. We should treat all culture with respect and fairness. Okay, cultural appreciation. It is the manner of giving honor and respect of one's culture. Cultural appreciation happens when a person attempts to appreciate and study about another culture. So, I mean, cultural appreciation, or, or, right? So, it's a manner of giving honor and respect of one's culture. So, cultural appreciation happens when a person attempts to appreciate and study about another culture. For one, to widen his understanding and relate with others in cross-cultural setting. Example, a Filipino who learns Mandarin in the Chinese culture. When I worked in Taiwan, I also studied, we also studied Mandarin or Pinyin so that we'll, we are able to somehow communicate in Mandarin or in Chinese to our patients. Cultural appreciation could facilitate cross-cultural understanding and communication. So in this picture, Angelina Jolie visited Pakistan surrounded with women in hijabs. So he is also wearing one. And wearing one herself is a means to fit in and show respect towards the culture. So that's a cultural, those are examples of cultural appreciation. The opposite of cultural appreciation is cultural appropriation. Is the inappropriate adaptation, adoption or, and lack of knowledge of one's culture for the sake of one's personal interests. Culture appreciation is taking one component of a practice belonging to another culture and using it for a purpose that is different from the real purpose. So for instance, buying an ethnic clothing from the natives of the mountain province and using it to make someone look fashionable without knowing the appropriate as occasion and its meaning when this clothing is used so it may be offensive to the ethnic group. So you need to be knowledgeable. So the call for us is understanding the culture of others and being sensitive to their beliefs and traditions. So in this picture, Katy Perry, in his performance in the American Music Awards in 2013, Perry dressed as a geisha and wore a full kimono with 
Dobby socks, lock, like with hair, his hair, lockered hair, gecko pancake, and heavily powdered face as if she is a, uh, a geisha. So she uses it as a costume. However, her song, the song that she sang at that time, has nothing to do with the outfit, nor with the Japanese culture. She was not culturally sensitive. And so she acknowledged it, she apologized, and acknowledged that she did it wrong in regards to her performance. So that is an example of a cultural appropriation and should be avoided. Again, the call for us is we need to understand the culture of others and being sensitive to their beliefs and traditions.